My name is Mike Howard. I coached the 1993 Final Four team, the boys soccer team. It was the uh, just the fourth year of the program's existence, and we hadn't even won a district championship up to that point. Uh, but the guys who were seniors that year, obviously this was their fourth year in the program, and you know, we felt like we had a good team coming back from a team that was 13-5 and five the year before. Uh, so we knew we had an opportunity to maybe have a good season, but uh, we started the season after our first five games. We only had one win, uh, so it was, it was a rough start. But then the boys bounced back, and they won, uh, or didn't lose in their next 21 games, and uh, we're the first team in raw history in 39 years of our school to go to the Final Four. So, um, you know, very proud of that accomplishment. And they, they had a great season. Um, had to go on the road to in the quarterfinal game to play the Jeff C. Jays. Pouring down rain, and Mark Lindy scored a goal. Ten seconds left in the fourth overtime for us to win 2-1. to one. That's, that's how we advanced to the Final Four. And then we lost to the state champions to Smet 1-0 in the semifinals. Um, and to Smet won the state championship game 2-0. So we had a, a very good performance there. Uh, in St. Louis, and it was really a great season. You know, five of the guys went on and made All-State. Chad Lieber was our, our starting goalie, and he was a first-team All-Stater, and we had a very good backup in Steve McMillan as well. Uh, but Chad Lieber, who and Steve ended up being an All-Stater the next year. But Chad, at the Final Four, Greg Butella, who coached the Smet Soccer team, said in the St. Louis Post-Dispatch that Chad was the greatest thing since sliced bread. Uh, that's how well he played at, at the Final Four, and it was, it was a, a great time for him to play well. He ended up going to Vanderbilt and playing soccer. Um, John Kwanis was an All-Stater. He was our sweeper back, and um, stopper back was Greg Pittman. John Kwanis, I should say, also was an All-State soccer player as well. And then our outside backs were Whitney Robertson and Tommy Sowers. Our outside mids were Jason Breeden and Justin McPherson. And then both of our center mids were All-Staters. Gavin McCoy made honorable mention, and Mike Kiefer was first-team All-State. Ryan Guffey was an All-State forward for us, and um, Mark Lindy, who scored a goal that put us in the Final Four, was a... Uh, uh, would have been a junior that year, or a sophomore. A sophomore, I'm sorry, a sophomore. But yeah, it was a great starting lineup. Barry Walford uh, was our super sub. He played everywhere on the field in every single game uh, and gave us quality time off the bench and was a huge part of the, that run that we went on. Yeah, it, I don't know, it was just a really fun group of guys to be around. It, like I said, it was their just the fourth season of the soccer program. We still played at Borough One Park. So we, had, uh, we, we hosted the district tournament. We pretty much walked through that. Uh, but the field is obviously very small at Burwan, and I don't think anybody would accept that you play on that kind of uh, facility today. But it is what it was in, in 1993. So, uh, and then we hosted the sectional game against Joplin, 1-3-1 uh, in that one as well. And Jason Breeden scored two of the three goals. <laughs> and they were what made uh, Roll of Soccer what it was for 29 years. So, you know, they, they gave us a standard of what to live up to. And every team that came after them, you know, we talked about the Final Four team and uh, their tradition and, and what it took to get to that that spot and how to be successful and um, really like I said they made this this program what it was for 20, 29 years actually I think they had a great influence on the girls team as well I mean, you know Ian talked about watching that team play and I'm sure that Kendra Wood watched them as well and you know anybody who was a soccer player it was it was pretty special it was pretty pretty special time. Dave is, you know, when I think about the Hall of Fame, and, you know, I've been involved with a lot of Hall of Fames through the years, and, you know, when I think about the qualifications for a Hall of Fame, you know, I, I think Dave is, is kind of the, he, he's just a natural. I mean, when you look at, at, at Dave and what he's done uh, for Rolla High School, I mean, when you think about somebody covering all of your sports for parts of five decades, I mean, he, he knows everything that's happened. I mean, he's he's probably forgotten more than he knows because I mean you're talking about you know he hasn't it hasn't been 50 years but it's 40 something years parts of five decades and you know every everybody that played any sport at Rolla High School during that time just about knows who Dave is and not only do they know him but he's just had such an impact when you look at somebody that's stuck with it that long and, and how many people have uh, stories by Dave in their scrapbooks and and things like that. I mean, that's what a Hall of Fame is all about, and I think that's why it's great to see Dave go in, and, and all of us at the Phelps County Focus would like to congratulate him for that. Yep. Hi, my name is Gary Miles. Uh, I was the football coach here at Rolla High School from uh, 1988 to 2003, and, and uh, have a long relationship with Dave. 
Uh, and I certainly want to take this opportunity to thank, uh, thank everyone for the opportunity to uh, talk about Dave and to celebrate this well-deserved recognition. I apologize that I will not be at the banquet, but um, he is certainly somebody that's been very important to me through the years. I remember meeting him. Uh, he was one of the first people in the community of Rolla that I had the for good fortune of meeting uh, as a press uh, representative. Uh, it was in 1988, and at that point, uh, he made me feel, uh, along with my family, very welcome to the community. And I realized at that point uh, that he had many positive, uh, many many positive attributes. Uh, that were going to be beneficial to us in the football program. Uh, he's very positive, sincere, professional, uh, hardworking, and genuinely was interested in the development and promotion of high school athletics. Uh, I know I always uh, enjoy reading his sports articles as well as his sideline column. Um, it always seemed as though if you weren't able to attend the game, you were you pretty well got a play-by-play -play description, very thorough. And the amazing thing is he he constantly had a positive twist, even though at many times that we as coaches and athletes didn't give him much to work with. But uh, he always managed to make it uh, a positive and uh, help promote the high school as well as the community of Rolla. Uh, he is highly regarded and by his professional peers, uh, greatly respected, and has received many honors through the years uh, from them. Uh, I definitely want to thank him for the 15 years that he devoted uh, to helping the Rolla football program. Uh, his statistics, his coverage, uh, his promotion of our athletes uh, was critical. We really appreciated and enjoyed seeing him each Friday night on, on the sideline. And uh, at the same time, when you think about it, he, he had many, many hours of, of work in the background that uh, not only promoted the program in general, but promoted the athletes. Anyone that uh, received all district or all state recognition uh, has to realize they owe him a big, big uh, thanks because he was the one, obviously their athletic ability put them in the limelight, but he was the one that put the finishing touches on it and uh, enabled them to get these uh, rec uh, awards. Uh, and this was not only for Rolla, but it was for area schools as well. Uh, so his efforts are greatly appreciated. He also uh, volunteered many years in the in the weight room with our off-season program, working with athletes. Um, he was helping with uh, lifting techniques. He would motivate and promote uh, uh, their development and was genuinely interested uh, in their success and had great rapport with them uh, through the years. Uh, again, congratulations on being inducted into the Rolla High School uh, Hall of Fame. Uh, we all appreciate and applaud your dedication to our students, athletic programs, and the community of Rolla. Hi, I'm Peggy Norton. I'm a urogynecologist at the University of Utah. That's somebody who specializes in women's uh, health problems. Um, and we do some, sur uh, some surgery and some research. Uh, and I've been lucky enough to have Ingrid Nygaard as my partner for the last uh, 17 years. So um, I was asked to uh, give you some information about what Ingrid has done with her life and what sets her apart. Um, and to me, it's humanity and curiosity. Um, she's always asking about what's best for patients, not what's best for her own practice or her own um, uh, uh, business. She's always thinking about what's best for the patient. Um, and Dr. Nygaard is always the person in the room who asks the difficult question, the question that the rest of us wish, uh, I wish, I had asked that because inevitably it's the most important question um, and the one that really does need to be answered in research or in clinical uh, uh, scenarios. Um, you should know uh, also of her uh, bravery. She was the president of the American Urogynecologic Society, so huge 
a 2000 member society of people who do GYN surgery. And this was in 2007 at a time when mesh was becoming a really big issue in GYN surgery. And instead of just going along and, and agreeing with everything, Dr. Nygaard said, wait a minute, what's the evidence that this works? Um, she gathered together a lot of um, the important people in GYN surgery and started us down a course of asking difficult questions. Um, and anybody who's ever watched TV in the last couple of decades knows that there were a lot of advertisements on TV um, saying if you've been harmed by vaginal mesh. Well, Dr. Nygaard was one of the people who finally put a stop to it. And uh, the FDA issued um, a severe warning um, uh, several years after Dr. Nygaard had begun um, this effort to uh, to ask the difficult questions. So she was brave at a time when I think many of the rest of the uh, GYN surgeons were just going along with it. Um, and then uh, she's become an important researcher, um, sort of the researcher's researcher in that she um, uh, was head of a large consortium of researchers for the National Institutes of Health, helping those researchers find the right questions to answer. Um, so honored has she been that she was um, uh, made the editor of one of the two biggest OBGYN journals in the United States and um, edited uh, that for uh, many years until she stepped down about a year ago. So uh, I didn't know if you knew what an amazing person she has been in her career, um, but let me think. Humanitarian, curious, uh, brave, and really, really smart. Yep, I got it all. Thank you, and uh, you are so right to honor her. Uh, she deserves that and more. My pleasure. Thanks. Hi, I'm Stephanie Grisham. Uh, I am a 1995 Rolla High School graduate. Um, I also taught at Rolla High School for 14 years in the mathematics department, and I am currently one of the three assistant principals at Rolla High School. Dr. Burke Bigular was my principal when I was a student here at Rolla High School, and then when I started my teaching career, he was my principal for the first seven years before he retired in 2008. Dr. Burke Bigular is the consummate professional. He uh, required excellence from all of us at all times, whether it be as a student or as a staff member. I know as a student, uh, when I was here at the high school, we were awarded the National Blue Ribbon Schools, which was a great honor for us to receive. Uh, as a, a teacher, when, um, when I first started, uh, we were kind of into the, the professional learning communities movement. Um, I know a lot of our teachers had went to Chicago to do the training for that, and we were ahead of other schools uh, with that. And Dr. Burke saw that vision. Uh, each year also, he would give us um, a task that we would have to do. We were, we were focused on something, and I, I remember one year we were focused on literacy, and we had to do the Freyer models. A couple memorable moments that I have with Dr. Burke. I remember... Um, I don't know exactly when it was, but he would uh, started doing uh, some delivery of cookies, I guess you could say. Um, he would randomly get on the intercom in between passing time when I was teaching, and he would say, I've got cookies, come find me, and would not say where he was at all. Um, and kids in the halls would just scramble through the high school just to find Dr. Burke to get a cookie. And so we kind of coined him the cookie man a little bit. Um, but it was just little things like that to build uh, our culture and climate within our building. The kids love that. Um, it, I'm sure it was fun for him. Uh, so that's a great memory I have um, with that. On a personal level, um, because he was such a supporter of my uh, professional career. I do remember when I was in my doctoral uh, graduation ceremony, I, uh, for everything that he had done with me of planting the seed uh, for me to go back and be an administrator, um, I just sent him a quick message while I was in that ceremony thanking him for all that he um, had did for me uh, through the years and so that was a special moment that, that we had together. So Dr. Burke has been a huge impact on my life professionally. Uh, when I got my teaching degree, 
I was so motivated to teach math for 31 years. That's what I was going to do. I'm going to teach math 31 years, retire, and be done. All Dr. Burke did was come up to me. I guess we were in conversation, and he just said, you need to go back. You have it. Um, and I kind of looked at him, and he said, you need to go back and be an administrator. He said, you're really good. Uh, so at that day, planted a seed in me. Um, to think, well, maybe I could go forward and, and be an administrator, um, and that's exactly kind of what I'm doing right now. Never thought I would get my doctorate either, um, but yes, I am Dr. Grisham at this point, and so um, he has just uh, been a great support to me um, throughout my years, um, even after he retired, and I know not only me did he do that too, but he um, had a knack for doing that for other um, teachers that he had. Um, here in the building or other people he interacted with. He just um, just exuded that presence of um, you know, supporting you and being able to have confidence that you could excel in other areas as well. In 1987, I became the executive director of the Missouri Association of Secondary School Principals. And that's when Roger Burkbigler came into my life. <clears throat> Roger was a board member and subsequently president of MASSP, and we worked closely together the eight years I was the state exec. Mr. Smith gave me a series of questions to which I could respond briefly. I will not dwell on his resume, you can read that, except to say that the most important award he received was the Robert C. Howe MASSP Service to Secretary Education Award. Roger was a teacher's principal, an equal act advocate of students. I would not know that from personal observation, but it's the vibes I got when I talked to people from Rolla. His mission was clearly to create an atmosphere where teachers could teach, students can learn, and parents were involved. There were many, but I have selected one memorable event to share. I wrote to several fast food restaurants asking to meet with someone about our rising concern that they were working our students' double shifts and long hours. This resulted in an invitation from McDonald's for officers to come to their headquarters in Oak Brook, Illinois to discuss. After meeting with a parade of vice presidents, we were invited to eat dinner with them and the CEO. He asked, why are we here? What can we do to help you? Whereupon, Roger quickly answered, Stop working our kids' double shifts and late hours. To which the CEO responded, Are we doing that? Get it stopped. Roger is not bashful. During his year as state president, Roger said that one of his goals was to make every member proud to be a principal. He always was proud to be a principal. That is... <clears throat> A principal is a magical creature. You can lock him or her out of the schoolhouse, but you can't keep him away from kids. Roger Burkbigler knows it's hard to walk on water in a hurricane. He knows you must control the dandelions so flowers may grow. He has a broad view of the educational landscape and has often been rode hard and put away wet. When pomp and circumstances played, and you see the expression of pride on his face, the circles of fatigue, but most importantly, the misty eyes and a trace of a tear on his cheek. That's Roger Burkbigler, a premier principal in the state of, two, uh, state of Missouri. Roger, I too am proud to have been a principal, proud to have been your professional colleague and to have walked beside you, yea, one step behind you on your journey, on our journey in the field of education. 
Roger Burke Bigler is truly a consummate professional. Thank you. Hello, my name is John Morris, and I'm a teacher and coach at Rockhurst High School in Kansas City, Missouri. I have taught and coached with Eric Berg for the last 38 years. Eric is the epitome of what a human being is supposed to be like. He is kind, generous, and compassionate. He is an unbelievable coach and even a better counselor to our young men here at Rockhurst. I am honored to have count Eric as a friend. We have spent countless hours, days, and years on the practice and game field, working with and coaching young men in football. He is one of the most competitive people I have met, yet he always treats people with dignity and respect, whether it be players, coaches, officials, or opponents. There have been many memorable moments shared with Eric, big wins, state championships and such. But my favorite times and cherished times were those shared in the coaches room after practices and games. It was during these times that our relationship grew over the years into a lifelong friendship. I have been incredibly lucky to have Eric in my life. I wish him all the best on this joyous and well-deserved occasion. Good job, my friend. Congratulations. Hi, my name is Tony Severino. I've been a friend of Eric Berg's for over 40 years. 37 as a co-worker and being a coach with me and three, uh, 40 years, uh, three years after I retired, I, I have known Eric for all that time. And uh, he is one of the class guys uh, that I've ever met. And uh, this is an honor that is so well deserved for him. He is so deserving of it. And uh, because what sets him apart from other people is his sincerity and his honesty. Um, he is one of the classiest guys that you've ever want to meet. He has uh, raised a tremendous family with four kids. He's got a lovely wife and Deb, and, and I've known them and I've watched them grow and I was at their wedding and nothing would ever surprise me about honors that Eric would get. And this is one that probably uh, uh, he would enjoy. If he is a, a true um, representative of, of, of your high school and everything that Rolla stands for, if, if all the people in Rolla are like Eric, that'd be a, that's an amazing place to live and grow up. But uh, anyway, I, I'm so proud of Eric Berg. He's, a, he's been a great friend of mine. And and he, we've had so many memorable moments. I mean, when you coach with a, a man for 40, 37 years, and uh, we sat next to each other on the bus, it was good luck uh, all the time. Uh, we took so many bus rides. In fact, uh, one year going out to Colorado, uh, we took our wives and we were playing out there. And Going to the game, I sat with Eric, and he sat with me because our wives didn't want to ruin, uh, uh, be bad luck. So uh, they sat together uh, on the other side of the bus. But uh, uh, I have so many fond memories of Eric uh, throughout the 37 years that I worked with him and the, the three years now since uh, I've been retired, almost three years. But anyway, um, congratulations, Eric. Uh, I wish I could be there, and Mayor wishes you could be there, and we could be there with you and celebrate with you. It is well-deserved, and uh, good luck, and, and, and uh, enjoy the evening. Thanks. I first met Leland August of 1979. Dr. King introduced me to Leland when he was a uh, science teacher at middle school and I was going to be his partner teaching science. And at the time, Dr. King privately told Leland to take care of me and Leland has done that very well for 43 years. Leland has a gentleness and a kindness that far exceeds most educators, but he also has very high expectations and he expects students to do well. 
and he inspires them and he gives them the confidence to do well. And he could take students from poverty, students that were neglected, students that did not have support at home, and he took all of those kids, channeled their energy, and helped them be successful. <laughs> there are so, in 43 years, there's a lot of memorable moments, both uh, personally and professionally. But I think the one that comes to mind the quickest, it basically tells us all we need to know about Leland. We were, we were painting his house in a very hot July, and uh, I climbed out of a window on the third floor to paint the dormer. And the next thing I know, Leland hands me a rope and he tells me to tie it around my waist and then he tied the other end of the rope around the toilet stool in the bathroom. And that is typical Leland because he always takes care of people, but then he does what he needs to do to get the job done. Leland always cares about people first. And that was the most important thing in his classroom, in his professional associations, the work that he did with others. They knew that he cared and he always listened. And so I've tried to emulate my personal and professional life much as he treated me, and that is to listen to people and truly listen to them and treat them with kindness and respect. I will never have that gentle streak that <laughs> Leland has, but I did try to treat people the way he treated me. Any educator wants to leave a legacy that says that they basically made a positive difference in the world and that they truly changed students' lives in a positive way. And on an occasion, actually save a child's life. And I can, without hesitation or reservation, say that Leland Womack left that legacy.